Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will speak about the seasonal or calendar trading strategies. Hello everyone, my name is Radan Wojtko, I'm CEO of Quantpedia.com. Today we will lightly touch the subject of the seasonal and calendar trading strategies, or seasonal and calendar anomalies. Uh, all of the materials that I will mention in this video will be available for you to read. Uh, and you will find the links uh, to them in the description. Let's start. If I mention market seasonality, most of the people will remember saying sell in May and go away. It's sometimes called the Halloween effect. And this anomaly says that the, on average, stocks deliver close to zero returns in the six month period from May through the October, while all of the performance is delivered from November through the April. So the idea is pretty simple. For us, it means that we should buy stocks at the end of the October and hold them until the end of the April. So while this strategy is very interesting and uh, very simple, it's not the only one. In reality, there are, in our database, there are over 70 seasonal anomalies and seasonal strategies. They do not spend just six months, but they can be from intraday to daily, weekly, or monthly time frame. So the seasonal anomalies are not uh, confined to only the uh, longer time frames, but also to short one or very short one to intraday time frame. They work for all of the uh, on all of the asset classes, so in equities, bonds, commodities, even on crypto. If you remember in the first video uh, that I shoot, uh, we mentioned the seasonal or intraday or overnight anomaly in Bitcoin. Uh, where we mentioned that uh, it makes sense to invest uh, into the Bitcoin only during two hours over the whole of the day. I would like to continue uh, with the seasonal anomalies and I would like to show you how you can combine multiple seasonal anomalies into the better performing strategy. I would like to mention our case study, Quantpedia's composite seasonal and calendar strategy. In this case study, uh, we selected four different seasonal anomalies. They're not demand in equity indexes, the Federal Open Committee meeting effect, uh, in stocks, option expiration, the big effect, and the pay that effect. I will very quickly go through all four of them and I will show you how you can combine them into one uh, trading strategy and then how you can improve that, uh, that strategy. So what does turn of demand effect mean? It's a well known effect in stock indexes. The idea is that equity prices usually increase during the last four days and the first three days of each month. There are multiple fundamental reasons for, for that. Main is the rebalancing of the mutual funds that are pushing the prices uh, up during the term of demand season. The second interesting strategy is Federal Open Market Committee meeting effect in stocks. So, according to the past research, the S&P 5 index average daily returns are outstanding during the FOMC meetings uh, since at least 1980. They are at more than five times greater, greater than the returns during the other average days on the market. It makes sense to hold the equities uh, during those uh, selected days. It's eight days during the year. Another eff effect is option expiration big effect. As this strategy suggests, it's again the calendar anomaly. So it's connected with the option expiration week. Week before the option expiration, which is Friday before each first Saturday in each month, the research suggests that stocks with a large market capitalization that have actively traded options have substantially higher average re weekly returns during these weeks. So it, again, it makes sense for us to hold these stocks during this option expiration. Week. Okay, and the last one is the payday effect. It's very similar to the term of demand anomaly. After the paydays, uh, investors seek to invest the funds into the equity market and they are pushing up equity prices. Now, many companies pay their employees twice a month on the 15th day and the end of the month. The end of the month payment is part of the uh, turn of the month effect. 15th calendar day is called pay day and there is a recognizable pattern in the middle of the month uh, where there is a significant uptick in the performance of uh, equity. Uh, what we can do is that we can build a composite strategy so we can take all of these small calendar anomalies or small uh, building blocks and we can combine them, invest into the SPI during the anomaly day. Now, our performance will be interesting, but we can even improve this performance by using the 200 day moving average. So we can invest on into these anomalies only if the market uh, prevailing market trend is uh, to the upside. So we will de decrease the maximum drawdown from 24% to 10% and we will increase the performance. 
So the resultant strategy would have the annual performance of 9% with the maximum growth down of 10%, which is very interesting risk to return ratio. That's a trading strategy built only on SPI or only on S&P 500, uh, SPI ETF or S&P 500. We can improve this strategy by using multiple ETFs. Now, how we can do it? So we can combine the calendar seasonal trading strategy with the momentum factor. Again, I uh, mentioned the momentum factor or momentum anomaly in uh, multiple previous videos, so I will not go into the detail at the moment. So what I will just say is that the momentum anomaly is a very pervasive anomaly that helps us to select ETFs or commodities or any asset that performs well and that there is a high probability that you will continue to perform well. So what we can do is to we can try to combine the calendar anomalies and momentum. Uh, instead of using the SPI, we will add MSCI EAF ETF, which is called EFA. It tracks the index that is composed of large and mid-cap capitalization stocks from the old market, like Europe, Asia, Australia and Far East, and it excludes the US. And we are also adding the MSCI Emerging Market ETF, EEM, which has exposure to large and mid-sized companies in emerging markets. So instead of using just one ETF, we are using three ETFs. So what are the rules? So the first one is that we need to build the calendar blocks again. We are using the calendar anomalies. We are selecting the days during which we expect that the performance of the equity market uh, should be positive. And the second block is momentum block. So instead of trading on those uh, selected days and using only the SPI ETF, we are using all of three ETFs. So we are using the momentum. So we are ranking all three ETFs based on the momentum. To be more precise, on 63, 126, and 262 days, it's approximately three months, six months, and 12 months. The exact number is not exactly important. So we are using more momentum periods just for diversification and for you know higher robustness. What are the steps? Uh, we calculate the momentum. We select which ETFs are the winners on each individual uh, individual time frame, and we are using the portfolio of the winners ETFs as a, our investment universe. So we are buying not the SPI, but we are buying the ETFs that are top performing. We can increase the performance with a model that's based on three ETFs instead of the model just based on SPI, uh, because we are rotating between the three ETFs. The annual return is nearly one and a half percent higher. And maximum drawdown of such strategy is uh, smaller than the model based just on ETF. So we have a higher drawdown, a return to drawdown ratio. So uh, I would like to thank you uh, for your attention. As I already mentioned, all of the materials, they will be linked in our description or in the description of this uh, video. And I hope we will meet again in the next. Interested? Then pick another video to learn more, or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.